Am I hearing this correctly? Is the liberal broken record in Cenk Uger finally coming around to one critical truth for why Trump did win? Cenk has curiously switched his tone after the election, and I think it's because he realized that the right wing has beaten the establishment in a way a left-wing populist like him never could. Listen to what he said to Tim Pool because it's a sign of things to come that I want to talk about. Cenk Uger himself, you tweeted, I've been trying to figure out why I'm more optimistic now than I was before the election, even though I was so against the guy who won. I know now. MAGA is not my mortal enemy, and neither is the extreme left. My mortal enemy is the establishment, and they have been defeated. It's not just that the establishment candidate lost, it's that their media is mortally wounded. The source of their strength was not insipid politicians like Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden. The source of their strength was their propaganda machine, the mainstream media. Now, online media is strong enough that their oppressive monopoly on the American mind has been broken. Now we're in the jungle. They hate that. I love it. This uncontrolled marketplace of ideas is where I'm home. I'd rather be in the populist woods than an establishment prison. So you got a ton of praise from a lot of conservatives saying that, well, uh, you know, Gunther Eagleman, they haven't been defeated. Uh, he calls you naive. Uh, Matt Gates said, I've long said there are coalitions to be made between the populist left and the populist right. My first critique would be it feels a little thick. It feels, you know, the election just happened and you're a guy who is very critical of Donald Trump in in very, very uh, heavy ways. I still am. So so how is uh, do you think Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection on January 6th? Yes. And you think that that's not a mortal enemy of you. You think the establishment is worse? No. So th that's where it gets complicated. So Donald Trump. I was dead set against him. Number one, I don't agree with most of his policies. But number two, after he uh, did a fake elector plot to overthrow the government and he did, uh, he said to terminate the Constitution, I'm out forever. I'm never, ever, ever going to vote for that guy. OK, I don't care if he was a Democrat or a Republican. You write, I want to terminate the Constitution and I'm done with you, especially on the left. You're in an establishment prison. OK, so the minute you step out the guardrail or away from the guardrails. Oh, well, 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 intruder alert, intruder alert, right? And so, oh, how dare you say that it's the donors, you conspiracy theorists? How dare you say the politicians aren't honest? How dare you say that about Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden? Well, now the how dare you sound hollow. You know what surprised me the most here? The left wing today seems more fraction than I can remember because there's an internal power tussle between the establishment and the populist factions that the Republicans had already conquered a decade ago with Donald Trump. Also, we'd love you to be part of the important conversations of our time, so subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay in the loop. Now, if you go back a few months before the media confusing hailstorm around Joe Biden and Kamala Harris captured the news screens, the Democrat economic populists like Cenk Uger and even someone like Dean Phillips to an extent since ran against Biden were practically shouting through megaphones that this establishment coalition was bound to lose. And guess what? That's because the suppressed left-wing populists had already seen this movie before in 2016, with Bernie Sanders getting sidelined and people like Cenk were always looking for an electoral punch to the face of the establishment that knocks some sense into it. Did that punch come from a Democratic primary in the last three elections? Maybe not, but the next thing is when their legitimacy and their tools of control in the media have been destroyed forever with a devastating loss to Trump. Now in the rubble of the Democratic establishment, someone like Chank has the chance to construct a truly populist party, which is where I think his optimism comes from. I gotta be honest, if you took the average conservative and put him on TV and asked him a question, they're gonna say something. They're mm -hmm. gonna have some kind of opinion on it or whatever. And I think this, uh, uh, this goes to the bigger picture of uh, and, and I'll say all these liberal personalities have been complaining about this. Even David Pakman's complaining about it. Conservatives are knocking on the door to come on your show. And liberals are like, let me talk with our PR people and see if we can make something happen. And they don't do it. Is no, no. We can't, can I just address that real quick? It's way worse than that. So why does uh, Positive America exist in a sense, right? So that they could, as we talked about, they could feel cool for going online or on a podcast, etc. But would those people who ran Biden's campaign ever come on the Young Turks? Zero percent chance. Yeah. None, okay. none, none, none. Kamala Harris, that? Joe Biden, none, zero, zero. Why? Because we ask real questions. So if you ask real questions, oh my God, they don't want, like. That's why they didn't want to do Rogan. Oh, they don't, I mean, but. Oh, could you imagine? Like, but Joe is kind of soft compared to us, <laughs> right? Like, even if you're a left winger or you're a Democrat, you're going to get a much tougher interview out of the Young Turks than you are out of Joe Rogan. And that's why she, she was such a knucklehead for not doing the Rogan interview. Well, you know what Joe's going to do. He's an amiable guy, right? He's not looking to ambush you or whatever. He's going to go, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, where'd you grow up? Oh, that's, oh, so you were at McDonald's, right? He's going to have that, but they can't even handle that. Right. So. <laughs> 
So that's why the general Mally Dillons and stuff, she's not going to come up. We're going to ask follow-up questions and be like, hey, why did you turn down hundreds of millions of dollars in earned media and free media? Mm -hmm. I mean, you keep raising money. You kept asking people for give me money, give me money. Oh, we raised all our money. We were called. And then, but wait, that 50 million views that, that Trump got on Rogan is worth an enormous amount of money. Then you wouldn't have to keep asking little grandmas for money right. if you just do earn media, so right? Why didn't you do it? Yeah. Why didn't you do it, right? And I could ask 10, 20 super tough questions like that, and they'll never ever go on a show that asks them those questions because they don't have answers to those questions. Their answer is, what do you mean? Fall in line, unity. They say the enemy of your enemy is your friend. The last three elections have shown that the real fight is between the establishment left versus populist right. And deafening the former is more important across the political spectrum. That's the difference you even see reflected in the media and online space. Because while you saw some campaign managers and spokespersons from the Democratic campaign, go on establishment left podcasts like Pod Save America, no one dared come on the Young Turks because that's where real internal accountability was going to take place. I think the last time I remembered someone from the top of the Democratic ticket making an appearance on TYT was Bernie Sanders, who did an extensive series of podcasts with Cenk himself. And now eight years later, Cenk literally gets more attention and conversations from the right-wing online media than the Democrats. He even wrote soon after the election saying, quote, I interviewed and debated nearly a dozen right-wingers before the election. The right wing is a thousand times more open to talking than the stuck-up Democrats in Washington who hate the idea of talking to someone who isn't in the elites. And that stretches as far as some policy overlaps as well, especially with the Department of Government Efficiency and Elon Musk announcing plans to audit and cut the Pentagon's wasteful spending. Cenk revealed he had communicated with Elon Musk for a collaboration on a plan saying, and I quote, I asked Elon Musk to put me in charge of cutting the Pentagon and he said, what are your suggestions? I run the largest left-wing social media network online and a Democratic leader has never asked me that question. The idea that they would take advice from a populist is disdainful to them. Now, which side seems more open and inclusive? Which side seems more welcoming and which side really tries hard to drive away if you disagree every little orthodoxy? Which side is asking for suggestions and which one is demanding compliance and obedience? But does a bruised and battered establishment really mean things are going to be easier for a populist left uprising? I wouldn't pass a judgment on that too quickly, at least not until there's a face to this populism with a proper candidate. They sound like, no, 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 no. You guys are the morons who lost many, many times. So you don't get to say, how dare you anymore, right? So that, that feeling of liberation within the left, within the Democratic Party, is what's critical. And the fact that we're no longer in a strictly left-right spectrum that we're in a populist establishment spectrum layered on those are all incredibly hopeful things and most importantly it's that online media for the first time beat mainstream media and so if that's true in a general election i believe it could also be true in a democratic primary okay because our number one opponent in democratic primaries is mainstream media i understand why chank would feel like at least a needle has moved for something he's been advocating for over the last two decades but the truth is that even though he may be happy with right-wing figures reaching out across the aisles and lending him an ear, there's no guarantee that it will last for long. That's because the chank and the populist left he advocates for has no leverage at the moment. They need access to the halls of power in their own party, and for that, they need a person that can carry a new and rejuvenated Democratic Party for a decade like Trump has for the Republicans. Who do you think that would be? Maybe looking past older names like Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, could it be someone like AOC or Nina Turner instead? Could that even be Chank himself if he actually decides to foray into politics after a brief presidential run this time? It's too early to say because we've got four years to find out, but there's no doubt that he could be a catalyst for change on his side, especially after stating the MAGA base has changed, which is what he said in the conversation with Patrick Bet David. I'll be honest. I mean, I, in 2020, I was super pissed. And, it, and I said, you know, look, I don't want to talk to Trump supporters. All I hear is the same thing. Trump, 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 Trump. And they never waver. So what I'm saying to the left now is, no, I'm seeing something new and different here. The MAGA base has changed. OK, that doesn't mean they don't like Trump. It doesn't mean that they're not right wing. But there is a significant portion of the MAGA base now that is, in my opinion, right wing populists who are actually anti-establishment actually anti-corruption, actually anti-war. 
And what I'm trying to tell the left is take the win. Take the win. We've been standing opposed here for 20 years trying to cut the Pentagon, trying to be anti-war, being uh, uh, getting money out of politics. If people say yes, for God's sake, those are our that's our lost tribe. Those are our right-wing brothers and sisters who are Americans, who are populists, who agree with us. Let's go fight the establishment together because if we're united, they cannot stop us. It would be an interesting career arc to see Cenk step into the political arena. And if nothing else, I think that will create some churning and mixing in the Democrats' top leadership that the whole political culture will benefit from. But let me know in the comments if you agree and share this with your Democrat friends to get a feel for what they think. This election could be flagged in America's political timeline as a watershed moment when both ends of the political spectrum finally shed the burden of the establishment and truly listen to this populist sentiment among them.